Saeed Doan. Hello. Good evening. How are you guys? Hi. Well, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having us, Mustafa. No, oh, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for joining us today. It's, it's, it's not exactly you know. Not many people would want to uh, get on a podcast. Uh, you know, almost end of the day on a Monday, straight <laughs> after weekend. People just want to sort of go back home. Uh, if they're working in the office, if they are at home, then just want to switch off. So, no, thank you guys for joining us today. I understand. So, you, so Said, you're based at home. Doan, you're based in the office Correct. today. <laughs> How are you finding things in the office, Doan? I think I really like uh, my time um, in the office because I'm really done with working from home. So, <laughs> it's really, I'm really enjoying that. <laughs> A lot of us are the same. Honestly, a lot of us are the same. Had it had it not been for the underground, honestly, just getting on the, getting on the underground and all those COVID cases, the crazy numbers, yeah. I, I I would be in the office every single day. Um, I've just about had it at home. But anyway, we're not here to talk about me working from home. We're here to talk about you guys. Um, this is um, different um, and really really interesting. Uh, I'm sure it will be to our audience because um, we're not going to be discussing the company you guys work for. Uh, in the sense that you're not your guys are, are you're not co-founders, you're not chief executives. Um, you've just joined the company recently as employees. Modular fintech scale up, roughly five years old, and um, you guys have literally just joined it a few months ago. And my understanding is that it's both. It's it's the first time both of you guys work as a product manager. So that's what really I'd like us to talk about today because. Making a switch, a career switch, is never easy. That's that's always a big, big thing. Uh, making a career switch during the pandemic, <laughs> it's a it's a whole different thing. So um, that's I'd like. What this is what I really would like us to focus on: your experience, how that's been, and you know, just reflect on that so that our our listeners will feel and can hopefully learn from that and think, okay, do you know what? I can make this move if I'm worried. If they're worried about making a move, then they can do it. Um, Said, let's start yeah. let, let, Let's start with you. This is, oh, looks like Doan, your first product manager role. But yeah. my understanding is that you've joined more recently. So do you want to give us a little bit of a background, a bit of an intro to you, Said? What is it you do? Where you come from, etc. Yeah, sure. Um, so currently, obviously, I joined, I joined Modular uh, quite recently. Um, and it's my first product role. Um, and I sit uh, specifically in, in European payments. Um, so currently uh, we're working on how to sort of expand that, um, you know, expand our European payments offering. Um, and yeah, it's just a, a part of that, that strategy to, to become um, a sort of a, a more of a global name. Um, and, and I'm sure we'll get there soon enough. Um, my background, so I, well, <laughs> I guess I'd like to say, well, coming out of university, I was sort of in and out of sort of different roles. Um, but I, I really got my start just to joining the, the support team at, at GoCardless. And that's where I sort of really fell in love with the sort of startup scale up environment, just that collective drive everybody has to, to sort of disrupt the industry that they're in and, and do things in a new way. Um, and I guess, you know, the, my, my capability perhaps was just seeing that I could contribute in, in other ways. Um, and yeah, I moved into to ops, um, really excelled at that. Um, and now I find myself in a product role um, and I, I hope to excel at that as well. Um, at the moment, too soon to say, but um, hopefully, hopefully in, in a, in a few early months. Days. When did you start so, again? When did you join? August. So yeah, very oh, okay. recently. Literally just two months. You have you probably haven't even completed your two months yet. <laughs> About two, three months now, yeah. Fair enough. And and though and then let's move on to you then. So you've been there slightly longer than Said. Yeah, it's it's been three months. Are you also a product manager? What is it that you do? So I'm Don, and I'm one of the associate product managers here in Modular. Um, I've been here for almost three months now. So um, before here, I was working as a business analyst in Cyprus an IT company and I was creating business processes for banks and fintech companies and well I studied banking and finance and I, I was always interested in um, fintech or product so that's why I wanted to challenge myself and have this role in, in here so yeah it's quite exciting and um, a good opportunity let's say. So. 
let's start. Let's go back to you, Saeed. Mm -hmm. This is your first role as a product manager. What can you tell us about the role of a product manager, the ac the actual job as a product manager? Yeah, it's it's funny because I was I was having a conversation with uh, one of my senior PMs today, um, and you know before before I took the role and even during the role, like I've been, I mean, you obviously you you know about the concepts like agile, Scrum, um, all of these sort of methodologies and concepts that you have to read about and know. You hear about, you read about, but you haven't necessarily, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And um, today I was just thinking, I was like, I've read about a lot of this. And if somebody asked me questions, I could probably t give you an answer. But I don't feel like I've applied this yet. Um, and, I, and I was speaking to, uh, yeah, my, my senior PM. And, and I haven't yet. It's because right now we are in the bare bones of a new project in European payments. So there isn't actually a team of, of developers and a scrum master that I've sort of sat in and sort of, you know, been a part of that meeting as a PM um, and having to sort of really flesh out some of these projects and how we're going to go about building them. So right now, um, I wouldn't say what I'm doing is sort of classic PM work um, in that I've been in these um, sprint reviews and retrospectives for the project I'm working on, uh, but that will come soon enough. Um, so, but right now what I'm doing is I'm really just fleshing out sort of the, the skeleton of what we're trying to build, um, getting concepts together, um, dissecting European payments rule books. So really like developers have all the resources that they need to go and, and really see what they need to build um, and answer all of their questions before they have to ask them. And if they have any questions thereafter that the everything I've sort of prepared doesn't answer, then obviously we, we have those ample chance to, to get that done. Um, so I hope that answers that a uh, bit of a roundabout way. But yeah, that's what we're no, doing. No, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. So in, in, in other words, you, what you're trying to do is you're trying to create the spec for developers so that they have it in front of them, they can go ahead and build the tools or the applications or the features that they really need for your customers. Um, don't want, moving on to you now. Uh, my understanding is, as you said, you've come from a business analyst background, so it's slightly different to Said. Is your job the exact same thing? Are you also in payments? Do you also do the same thing or do you do things differently? Well, currently I'm developing our internal tool, which is our admin portal. And I believe that I have the best team in this whole planet now. <laughs> so as an APM, I gather product requirements and align them with um, our business goals. We're coordinating with stakeholders to achieve the product vision um, fixing the critical problems, developing new product features and doing automation for our internal tool. So um, simply we influence decisions, not just about what gets built, uh, but how it gets built in general. And is it so, you know, from, 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 you know, somebody, let's just say who's out of modular from out from the outside, like where I'm standing or sat down at the moment. Um, is it safe to say that you're more of a technical product manager than say, given that you are, as you said, you work more on the uh, internal tools, developing the internal tools? Yes, I can clearly say that because we are working with APIs and the services and trying to gather information to understand more about the requirements and the requests and then we are prioritizing our um, projects and talking with other teams to complete the project, let's say. Okay. What made you actually take this move? You said you you're, you were working as a business analyst. It's, well, it's not exactly unusual to go into product management, but why? What prompted it, especially during a pandemic? Why change a career during the pandemic? Um, actually, I was always considering about um, changing my career or developing myself, but um, it was quite exciting opportunity for me and I wanted to challenge myself and um, had a small chance to, um, to grow with the company, let's say, because it's a new company, um, there'll be a good challenge and the opportunity sets. Um, um, that will make a real impact on the business and for myself. So that's why I wanted to challenge myself and go go for this role. Okay, unlike Said, who has come from GoCardless and has experienced, let's just say, the startup world, uh, has experienced it, what would make you jump into a startup, um, right, again, right in the middle of the pandemic? 
what made you jump into modular? Why, for example, didn't you choose to go somewhere else? Let's just say more settled, more established. I mean, uh, yes, obviously there are scale up, but they everybody knows startup scale ups always have that risk element to them. Um, well, I, th I think so, but um, there'll be a bunch of challenges when it's a startup. However, um, I don't want to call it as a challenge, but kind of I'm learning a lot of um, things every day and sometimes it's quite overwhelming. So in, in the long term, I think we'll grow with the company, which is really good. And that's why I wanted to choose a startup so that I can also go with the company. Said, what about yourself? What made you take the make the move to product management? Because I remember when we when we spoke earlier before, um, you said it wasn't exactly something that necessarily you had in mind. But when you saw the job description, it kind of spoke to you. What was it? What what spoke to you? I mean, to be honest, credit to whoever wrote it. Let's be honest, the talent team there. Credit to them because they managed to bring you in. But what was it? Yeah, no, yeah, it, yeah. Credit to them because uh, when I was when I was looking for, I was looking for role specifically in modular. Um, I perhaps get to, to why that is, but <clears throat> I was looking, I was looking at ops because that's what I knew. Um, and I just, I don't know, just out of intrigue, I clicked on the uh, on the product um, uh, opening, and, and I read it. I thought I could do this, um, and and I dropped that application. Um, but so yeah, no. So I I I guess what enticed me in the end was that. Being being in in ops and go cardless, um, I got that. That's when I sort of initially when I got my exposure to working with engineers, even working with product managers, um, and just just the whole variety of like different stakeholders. Um, and it wasn't exactly customer facing, so getting a taste of not just the technical element but the commercial side as well. Um, and I, I I always saw the the product manager role, and I just thought that would be a cool that would be a cool thing to do because. It was a it was a role whereby you could, as Dogan mentioned, you could influence how a product is built or have um, you know ha have your voice in that strategy conversation. Um, whereas perhaps in say say more ops roles or even engineering roles, um, you know what you need to build, and if you're good at it, you get it done. Um, and and the rewards for that are obviously great. You know that's widely known. Um, but for me, I just I had that um, appetite to. to have more of an influence in terms of what are we doing here and why do we need to do it um so not just the technical side but of that commercial conversation as well um and so when i and and i guess i i didn't quite see that opportunity for myself at go cardless at the time that was that was literally it in terms of we had the people we needed to move forward in the direction that we wanted to move so there perhaps you know strategically it didn't make sense for me to be moved in into any other role um, and, and I saw that as the case. Um, and so when uh, the opportunity at Modular, and I'd known about Modular uh, beforehand anyway, because being in ops and Modular um, servicing Revolut, uh, I'd see their name pop up in our reconciliation, for example. Um, yeah, so so I, um, so I looked into it, saw the product role, and one thing that really sort of took me aback was that, you know, they were looking for someone with experience in the in the payments industry which I did have, um, that was able to, that was well versed in the technicalities of it, um, which I was, um, but didn't strictly require any product managing experience, which I didn't have. Uh, and I was like, this sounds great. Uh, and so, yeah, um, dropped my application a few weeks later, we, yeah, we got, got everything, um, signed off and here I am. Said, actually, given that you're the one, you're the one who has joined quite recently or you know, more recently than Doan, what's it been like for you? Do you know when I, so when I first jumped in, I was obviously I was super excited. I was like, "Great, I got my break, um, and this is why I want to sort of um, re really just I, I want to excel in this." Um, and I now came in very driven um, and and wanting to learn. Um, but it was it was a bit of a for me it was a bit of a how do I put it? I don't want to say. It, Okay, yeah, a bit of a shock, a bit of a shock in that I went from doing a job where you learn the processes and you execute them. Um, and so you know your job day in and day out. And if you do it well, you progress. Um, and and that that's what I found to be the case. Whereas now I'm in a role where we kind of have to, we just, we get given like a skeleton of, all right, we're, we're doing this project. Um, we kind of need to know what 
for example, what, what are direct debits in, in Europe? Could you find that out and prepare this document so we all understand what it is? And, I just, and you know, that, that sort of change in task where you go from being somewhat micromanaged, you sort of get used to that, to absolute autonomy almost, where it's just like, we just need this done, here are the bare bones, go and produce it. Um, and that for me... How are you enjoying the autonomy? How are you? Because a lot of people always say, I don't like micromanagement, I prefer autonomy. How are you finding this switch? It's funny, I, I thought I'd love it, but sometimes I do miss... I do miss the guidance almost the, the, I don't want to say hand holding, but almost sometimes you're just like, ah, I feel like I'm drowning, but, um, uh, save me. But, um, no, w one thing it does is makes you resolute. Like I'm, I, I don't shy away from making mistakes. So if I, you know, especially early on, you know, I was given perhaps, you know, uh, this is our, this is an expectation we have. We kind of need you to get this done. Like, okay, cool. I'll go away and do it. Uh, and the type of person I am, I like to, I like to be very independent. And I'll only ever ask questions if I really, really don't know. And perhaps to my detriment at times. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to hold my hands to that. Um, and so, you know, you know, even early on, just making mistakes um, on, okay, this is exactly what we needed to do, etc. For me, it's a massive learning curve. Um, and I'd like to think that I've gotten used to the nature of the role. And what that's allowed me to do is, is really plan out my day better. Um, plan out my priorities you know it's you know I'm, I'm even doing different things you know I'm working with the director of product on another thing where we're trying to get a, a you know an external tool that we're trying to use as a product team and trying to flesh out how we would do that um, so trying to yeah um, organize myself and really work towards um, commercial deadlines like the stakes are a lot higher in in roles like this um, whereas you know in ops if you make a mistake somebody will know how to fix it and you go again the next day whereas you know, if you're two, three weeks behind, that's, you know, that that's, you know, another two, three weeks where you can't go live with a product. So um, things like There's a lot of responsibility, a, 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 a lot of responsibility on your shoulders, basically. Exactly. So, yeah. So trying to, I guess, um, I guess trying to use that pressure and energy um, in a productive way and not actually let it um, dishearten you but but actually drive you to do better I, that that has been a i think that's been a massive life skill not just in work but so yeah i think that there's real value in that for sure in the interest of clarity yeah okay in the interest of clarity uh, you said you like to make mistakes early on because you can get them out of the way and you learn things quickly yeah. how have you found the environment uh so far much is it forgiving enough that you are okay to make mistakes and learn from them or is it more of a you've got to be careful here you know uh, there's a lot of responsibility here. There's no room for, not much margin for error, basically. Yeah. I know I've thrown you a curveball here, technically, but, you know, yeah. in the interest of clarity, it's important to know. Of course, of course. Um, I, I don't know, perhaps, I don't know if there'll be, this, this will be different for Don, but for myself, um, I early on, yes, there was, there was, yeah, there was, there was room for forgiveness. And I think there still is. I want to say there isn't. Having said that, um, right now, you know, we're getting closer and closer to sort of um, where, you know, questions will be asked by stakeholders. Where are we with this? Even I got questions from, you know, sales teams and such about, you know, this particular project that we're working on um, or this feature that we're trying to launch. Where are we with this? Um, and I think, you know, I think it would perhaps be naive to even expect um, that you you can be lax and make mistakes Um in a way where you're, you're very comfortable to make mistakes. I think early, early on that's fine. Um, but right now where I'm at, even though it's two, three months in, I'd like to think that um, I would now rather ask a million questions to my senior PM and really get on his nerves than than to make a mistake and delay us by a week, for example. Um, and s Do you feel there is that flexibility? Is there, is, is, is there that, do you feel there's that support available that actually, yeah, you can go and ask a million questions. As you said, you probably know you're a senior PM, but yeah. it's actually welcome. Is that part of the culture or not necessarily? No, it is. He insists. If anything, I've been, I've been, um, I've been somewhat told off for not asking enough questions. Um, and so I, I think right now it's not just a matter of where I don't think the team might be forgiving enough. I, I don't think I'd be forgiving, forgiving enough for myself um, in terms of, so that's your own set standard. This is this is your high bar, as they say. You've set yourself. You've got that high bar. Yeah. 
more than the fact that you feel if you made the mistake. It's more to you. You're not letting yourself make the mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I even I allow myself that leeway in the first first few few weeks, even the first month. Yeah, it's a new job. I'm not just learning about the role, but I'm learning about the tools we use. Things like you know Miro and Jira and Confluence, all of these things. Um, I'm trying to get the hang of it. But now I'm at a point where I'm like, okay, I know how to use these tools. Crack on. Um, and if you if you make a mistake, I think obviously mistakes are of different degrees. Um, you know, perhaps not having a certain document ready that you can bang out in the next two hours, that's fine. But, um, you know, a mistake about, you know, being lax the entire week, which means, you know, things you needed to get done have to get done now the week after, that for me isn't okay. Um, and so trying to just live up to my own standards, um, yeah. Doan, moving back to you then again, H how has it been then for you? Let's let, w walk us through your experience then, moving in from a uh, completely different role towards a uh, product manager? Oh, well, um, I was working with the clients, let's say, so I was more to the customer facing, but currently um, I'm doing this internal tooling, um, which is Ops tooling, our admin portal. And yeah, it's, it's something similar, to be honest, and the thing that I'm currently doing, but um, the only different thing maybe is um, we, we currently we're doing this internal tooling, so it's not um, customer based thing and this is more, something more about um, I'm having these meetings with with my colleagues and teams and stakeholders um, to discuss about the requirements and everything so um, compared to my previous job um, I was doing business processes for banks and fintech companies um, but now I'm trying to um, redesign and um, the admin portal um, from scratch and I'm learning a lot with the services and the APIs that we have so yeah it's, it's really going good okay. um, you said obviously this your previous role as a business analyst was back in Cyprus did you move into the UK for this role or as in did you interview while you were in Cyprus or were you here when you interviewed and got the role? Actually, I'm based in Amsterdam office, but um, I... Oh, so you're based in Amsterdam yeah, now? Yeah, um, Okay. <laughs> so I came to the Netherlands for 10 days, but due to lockdown, I couldn't go back to my country. Then I work one and a half more years remotely Then I found Modular. So I was in the Netherlands when I was hired. Um, so, yeah. And, 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 you're still, and you're still working in the Netherlands and you haven't gone back? No, I'm working in the Netherlands and is is your how, how comfortable would you say for you to do your work remotely obviously Saeed has been onboarded remotely we'll talk about that but how comfortable would you say you are uh going back to Greece and uh, sorry to Cyprus and uh you know working remotely I think I like working remotely but I like more um colleagues with my colleagues at the office so I prefer to work from the office instead of um the, home so yeah i i think i will definitely prefer to work from the office instead of um, staying at home or being cozy because after some point <laughs> I, I cannot concentrate and yeah uh, lose my I focus know the feeling. i know the feeling <laughs> the, the, the 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 couch can be very very appealing <laughs> everything around you know the, the 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 comfort of your own home um said how have you found the onboarding You've not gone into the office. You're still at home. Whereabouts, by the way, are you based in the UK? So I'm based in London. Okay, um, so you are based in London. I am based in London. Yeah, and we do we do have a London office. It's just um, I love remote work. <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, and so yeah, so you've not had to go to the office at all then since you've started. There hasn't been a demand for me to go to the office. No, um, I would be. I have said I would be interested to. Like I do want to go to the office at some point. Um, but I want to see the office. Um, but yeah, I just I just haven't come round to you know. <laughs> It, what it is, it's I think, like what you said, Mustafa, getting on the tube in the morning. Um, oh, yeah. To, yeah, yeah, just the thought of that. And sometimes I just wake up. I'm like, we'll we'll do it tomorrow, and then tomorrow never comes. Um, so it's, but I will. I, I'm sure I will at some point. I, I'll have to. I have to. Um, but yeah, no, no. I agree. I agree with you. The wake up in the morning, look at whatever the weather. Yeah. I'd much rather I'd much rather be taking a stroll outside than going back than getting on getting on that tube and sacrificing an hour and a half of my life. Yeah, uh, yeah. on that underground. So, but yes, please. So, I've, so yeah, no. For me, it, it's been interesting because I've actually onboarded people remotely. 
and to now be on the flip side of it. So yeah, when we were so even at, at GoCardless, I was, I was supervising the ops team, and we we had new hires, and I had to onboard them, and they'd never been, and I really had to sort of develop a strategy on how I was going going to going to onboard them, and now I'm getting sort of. The, and now I'm on the other side of the table and just uh, now I sort of know what they feel like or what they've experienced um, and definitely I would have done some things differently um, but I think now yeah how the onboarding has been specifically um, the thing is I don't have it's 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 a difficult question in that I, I don't have a bad experience to compare it to um, I just and I can't expect well, t t technically you've literally just uh gave us something you've onboarded people yourself yeah. remotely and you said there are probably certain things you would have probably have done differently that's true yeah so you you, you i mean i'm sorry uh, you gave me that I, you you gave me that <laughs> to work with me. yeah I, I opened myself up there didn't i um Abs i mean yeah, yeah. so <laughs> what are the things that you say these guys modular have done really well yeah. that you'd say um you necessarily i wouldn't say you didn't do yeah. but you'll like what they're doing because it's really good yeah cool yeah um so i think okay so in terms of what's been similar is we've all i've given resources to the to the new employees i've been given resources now by by my colleagues oh read this and learn about it um and it will help you at least in terms of concepts you understand what the role is like cool um i think it's the in terms of being in terms of i think having easy access to colleagues um especially early on when you don't understand something and 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 i felt this too i think when when you're a company the size of modular everybody is very busy um in terms of you know they, they all have a million and one things on their plate um and you might drop a question and you may not get a response until perhaps later on in the day and until then you do feel like you're being a bit idle um and i did feel like that on some days um until and so i guess Perhaps if I wasn't being onboarded uh, remotely, maybe uh, you know I would have been up to speed sooner. Um, and and you know, like, like I said, I feel, I feel the same way. What, and that's why I think what I would have done differently, maybe at, at, at uh, you know go cardless, is perhaps I would have you know developed a way where you know the the colleagues that were being onboarded perhaps had someone at their not not their call and beckon, but really someone they truly had access to. Um, so they didn't feel like they were a sitting duck waiting for the next thing um, to happen. Um, and and it was the same reasons for me were that I had a million and one things on my plate. I didn't know what their experience would be like in terms of once they've done the thing I've asked them to do, what do they do the next two hours? It wasn't really, you know, it was like, OK, I've got this done. Now I'm going to move on and get my task done and then I'll come back to them. But within that time, what are they doing? Um, and so I think... A lot of companies perhaps haven't got that right just yet and and i, I wouldn't expect them to we're still very early on in terms of see, seeing that wide um implementation of remote working and on onboarding remotely um and i think we're, st we're actually on, on that we're having even some 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 um challenges now from certain companies or and a good number of companies actually uh saying that now we don't want to do remote working anymore we had to do it <laughs> yes we saw the benefits of it but now we want to go back into the office which is quite bizarre yeah um so no i completely understand that yeah and i think i think remote working is great once you know what you're doing and you get and you're and you're sort of proficient in the job um remote onboarding is a different ball game i find um and and yeah you've been onboarded before you've joined your co-cardless it wasn't remote no. you're working in the office yeah uh and this isn't and i don't want you to think that this is comparing modular with go cardless you yeah. know both great organizations in their own right 100 but from an onboarding point of view You've been onboarded physically in the office and you've been onboarded remotely. Yeah. What would you say are the differences? Um, and, you know, is it so different being onboarded remotely uh, that it justifies companies not to want to do it and to bring people back into the office? Yeah. Um, I, think, I guess off the top of my head, the first thing was structure. Uh, when I was, you know, being, being onboarded in the office, um, you're sat next to colleagues um, and so uh, well well first thing yeah when you're in the office you're sat next to colleagues you're already building a rapport you're already networking getting to know people um, and you know you have a question you can ask on the fly you can ask anybody 
Um, and on top of that, you have the structure of this is our training. At two o'clock, you need to be here. At three o'clock, you need to be there, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and so, yeah, you do tend to feel like there's a lot more structure in your day, which almost feels like school. So it's like you're, you're learning. You're constantly learning. Whereas I think when you're when you're being onboarded remotely, um, there's only so much self study you can do. There's, there's only a couple people perhaps you can reach out to. Um, and that has that's always going to be a challenge. Um, and so I understand perhaps I understand companies who don't want to remote on um, who, who don't want to onboard remotely. Um, but I think but also at the same time, I think it's a why run away from the challenge? You know, it's I think it's an interesting way. It's a new problem. Um, and I don't think fintechs or, you know, the kind of people that work in it run away from problems, right? The, 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 the whole point is they are where they are because they find solutions to the tech startup or scale up now. It, 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 tackling problems and challenges is basically the middle name. Exactly. It's what you guys do. Yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, so I see this as a challenge that we can we can tackle without knocking remote work or remote onboarding. Um, we haven't done it before. Well, obviously, we're seeing the, the gaping holes in where we can improve. Let's Let's improve them. Doan, your thoughts on that? Well, I think working remotely is really good, uh, but sometimes I prefer to stay at home if I want to read something else or watch something else. But I prefer to um, work from the office most of the time because I believe I will have more colleagues with my colleagues. As Said said, like, uh, if you want to talk, you can just chat or uh, location-wise and everything. So, but in general, I think companies should try to um, offer more to their employees and working from home is um, one of the things that should be considered these days. So I want to I end this really by asking you both a question. Uh, both of you, again, if, if, if in case I haven't said it a hundred times already in this podcast so far, have made a move from a completely different career. You've made a sidestep and you changed careers and you've done so on during the pandemic. What has been the biggest challenge you have faced by making this sidestep? And would you recommend such a move to people who are considering or contemplating changing their careers? Uh, Doan, let's start with you on this one. Um... I think if you would like to learn something else, like if you want to develop yourself, you should be away from your comfort zone. That means you're learning a lot or you start learning a lot. So I, I prefer if you like to, um, if you want to um, be on the next step, you should just try to do that instead of um, talking to yourself or thinking about your uh, future development. So yeah. So what's been the biggest challenge you faced by making this sidestep? Uh, maybe um, company's culture, because um, well now I'm, I'm at the Amsterdam office and we're only with my I'm I'm with my manager and we're only two, so most of the people are based in the UK offices, so we don't have a lot of people to talk with, but um, we have weekly updates at happy hours every Friday. And we usually send invitations to meet remotely and have a chat. And maybe that will be the ch challenging point that um, I don't have a lot of colleagues to ch chat with currently. So, so, so that technically, that's one of the challenges you would be facing as working remotely or being on board remotely in a way. Said, what about you? What's been the biggest challenge you faced by making this side step from? you know, your previous role in Go Cardless to this. And would you encourage people to make a career switch, especially during those times? They are challenging times, We, especially in the UK. We probably haven't had those challenging times in God knows how long. So the biggest challenge I've had to face is going from um, a very sort of binary role in that this is what needs to be done, finished, we're done, you can tick that off, to really qualitative work you can spend hours on something and then go here i've done it and you don't know if it's right yet until you know engineers need to use it or uh you know your senior pms taking a look at it and and giving you the okay yeah this is good um and and having the autonomy to to and really not too much guidance in being able to produce that work so for me that yeah that that's been the biggest challenge like i can't now read a guide learn the process and execute 
I have to now, you know, get get get, get sort of you know bare bones instruction. Go. This is this is what we need. Um, figure out a way to get it done and present it in a way that you're comfortable presenting it, and then hope it's good, and hope it's what they're looking for. Um, and that for me is it has been a little bit more stressful, um, and 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 a challenge. But at, at the same time, uh, uh, very rewarding because. I didn't have to follow a guide. This was this is all me that I've done. That I've all the skills that I've been able to develop, and here's here's what I've produced. Um, and if and you know if it's not accepted, you know you learn from that too, and you can only get get better moving forward. Um, but whereas I guess in an operational role, what I found is once you've learned it, you've learned it. Like where do you go from there? Other than you know you're supervising the team or managing the team, or you get promoted to the next level, whatever it might be. Um, so yeah, I guess the nature of the work has definitely, definitely been a challenge. Sort of moving to from perhaps a more quantitative sort of yes, no, um, correct, incorrect to is this good? Just quality, um, and does this get the job done for us? Does it make sense, etc. Um, so that yeah, that's been the challenge. Would I recommend would the recommend switch? It? Yeah. yeah, would I recommend? Would I recommend the switch even? Yeah, would I recommend the switch? Um, honestly, really depends how ballsy you are, man. Like. It's it, it really is a matter of because every because especially in these times everybody wants stability. Um, you want to know that you're secure in the in the role that you're in, and perhaps you don't want to give that up even if a great opportunity comes along for you to make a switch. Um, you know, I I made it because I had faith in myself, um, and I would say if you have faith in your abilities, I I, I I'm of the I'm of the thought that you know come five years later, don't regret having said no to something, um, and so make the switch if you, if you have the chance you know and you know if at the end of the day every, if if somebody's getting the chance to make a switch it's because they're good and if it doesn't work out you're good you'll get picked up by something else too um and so yeah i i would recommend it but i also would um you know with with the caution that if you're moving from a more operational role you know when you when you're when you're in an operational role be it you know customer service or payment operations or hr whatever it might be where you're just executing processes those are more easier switches like me switching from say customer support or payment payment ops to hr that wouldn't have been a challenge for me i just be like okay i'll learn their processes and i can do it not a problem and there's value in that um but moving from a, you know that to a, a role like a role that strategy more, more times than not um that can be th th that's the challenge that's the challenge just yeah having to sort of change your mindset um and really work to different expectations um so yeah fair enough saeed though and thank you guys very much for uh jumping on this podcast i won't take any longer of your time it is monday uh end of the day i'll let you guys enjoy the rest of your evening and Appreciate uh it. Yeah, I, 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 do, I, I do look forward. I do believe we are going to be uh, working with you guys on an event coming up soon. So I look forward to that. Yeah, and no, I really enjoyed yeah. this, Mustafa. Thank you. Thanks for your time, Mustafa. Take care. Bye-bye.